script. We all have very similar backgrounds. This is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. shades yeah. of beige. The yeah. regular yeah. story. <laughs> like it. Um, I'm going to start with you, Henry, with a really um, difficult first question, which is what is oh. the lasting appeal of Sherlock Holmes? Why is this character one we just keep returning to time and time again? We can't get enough of Sherlock, it seems. Uh, because there are always aspects of his mind that are more interesting, intriguing and surprising than perhaps our own. And I think there's always going to be an allure um, for characters that can explain the seemingly unexplainable. Hmm. And, you know, that trope uh, exists in, in a great number of characters, um, but he's a kind of shining example. Uh, and, 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 you know, such a shining example. That's why his, his myth is, is, and, and legend has endured. Yeah, but he's nothing without Watson. Do you think, you know, Royce, do you think what, what Watson's underestimated? I feel like he's, he's been, he needs his own series one day. We need a, we need a big Watson series. <laughs> oh, well, that would be this fantastic. It? Well, I think Watson is, is by, this is, this is it. I think Watson, by definition, is, is always is always the sidekick, is always the kind of voice of reason, you know, the dog's body. The good guy, by definition, and I think what I wanted to do is, you know, flip that, not not just to flip it for the sake of flipping it, but, you know, there's a darkness to this guy and there's a, there's a, there's a history that he's, he, he can't detach from, um, not just in our time span of, you know, from when we pick up the show to 15 years previous, but I wanted him to have this whole backstory, this whole kind of world weary traveler where he's just lucked on situations and, and circumstances and he's had to adapt, uh, you know, and he's, you know, we know Watson as an army doctor and we see him as, you know, the, the kind of, the, he's not, I wanted to kind of depict him as a kind of soldier, almost soldier doctor, you know, he's been around that and he's had to survive and, and, and do what he do what he's had to do to survive. So I think, you know, this Watson is, is, is not like anything you've seen and uh he's he's got a real kind of dark thread running through him that i really wanted you to that i really wanted to run through the series yeah i mean and it goes henry i mean both of these these versions of the characters are unlike anything we've seen i just wonder when playing this version of, of sherlock uh, so different to the ones we usually see do you still watch other interpretations and use them as a kind of guidance or is the rule book completely ripped up here and you have the freedom to to access this character in, in your own way yeah honestly i did feel free I felt very liberated by the enormity of the world that Tom was building, you know, cause you've got so many, you've got so many elements that are not part of previous worlds of Sherlock. So it's like, before you even get to examining previous characterizations, the whole world that we're dealing with, like the apocalyptic element of it, the things of like the supernatural element, things spiraling out of control, monsters, you know, demons, you name it. All of those things are being thrown at, at at me as an actor or at Sherlock as a character. And, you know, then you've got the time jump, you know, to, to be playing either side of a 15 year time gap. And then on top of that, you've got the, the torment and the immense kind of heartbreak that, that Sherlock's experiencing uh, and, and the kind of tragedy that has befallen him. So there's so many more, there's so many new elements that took me to another place, that took me into a, to a place where I wasn't, recognizing any of the previous versions that I've loved watching as a fan. So I was kind of like already lost. I was way off piste that I couldn't even get back to the, you know, the familiar path, even if I wanted to. Yeah, because yeah, Royce, I mean, these two characters, they're just emblematic of a series that is, 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 it seems to be incredibly like, there's no rule book for this. I mean, there's this idea, isn't there, in period dramas and settings, everyone must talk and act in a certain way. But do you think this show is a real kind of shiny light to show that actually we don't need, it doesn't need to be kind of historically accurate. And actually we can, you know, there's zombies in this and actually we can throw up the rule book and we can create settings and environments where there is more modernized language and different ways of, of talking and acting. Yeah, I think, look, if you if you're going to if you're going to reinvent something or not, not even necessarily reinvent it, if you're going to tell a story that's been told many, many times before, as Holmes and Watson have, you know, has it's you can do anything you want with it. That's the that's the joy of art. That's the joy of creating. That's the joy of what we do as a director, producer, writer, actor. People are always going to have opinions. You know, some people will hate it. Some people will love it. Some people will be indifferent by it. Some people will 
question this decision and that decision, but if you're going to do it, then stick by it and do it. You know, it, there's, there is, there is, I don't think there's a rule book anyway. I just think people play to what's safe. Yeah. That's why you see so many reinventions of the same thing. And people talk about it as in it's, you know, this new, wow, it's, you know, most things are safe because people herd mentality. They want to stick to what's safe in numbers. But what Tom's done is he's just, he's taken his idea and he's developed it over 10 years and he's produced this, he's given us this, this structure for us then to come in and go, yeah, you know, to me, it doesn't matter that I'm playing John Watson. I, you know, the list I'm joining, you know, of actors who have played John Watson is a brilliant list and they're actors I absolutely love, but John Watson's just a name, you know, he's just a name. You know, my character is a man who is as complex as any other human being on, on earth. So yeah, to me, there is no rule book. It's just, it's just an amazing show that's going to, that, you know, it's going to draw people in. It's going to bring in all the new fans and it's just got so much energy to it, man. People are going to love it. Yeah, I love that. I, just love that. I totally agree with you, Stefan, in, in terms of like changing the 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 traditional makeup of, of period drama to be something that feels less ornamental, mm -hmm. less something that is just observed and more people that feel real and relatable and like they're bursting through the screen and, and you know, dare I say it, closer to the audience. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Rather than this like halcyon, the, I feel like the halcyon era or it is it's is not entirely you know i don't I feel like that we're maybe we're moving slightly past that yeah uh yeah but what i was going to say henry i mean despite the fact that, i mean obviously there is lots of kind of more modernized aspects of this it is very much still the set and the kind of environment you guys were on still was very much of its time and i've mm -hmm. and I, the, the other cast members i've spoken to today have said it really smelt like mushrooms was that was that the case was it quite was it quite smelly on set <laughs> It really smelled like mushrooms specifically, specifically <laughs> mushrooms. Um, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know that like, uh, what's it called? Dry ice and smoke and, and, and uh, you know what? That, there's that great scene, this isn't a spoiler, where Royce and I, it's in a, it's in a flashback and we're walking through a market and they had real, um, we had real chicken. They built Chinatown, basically. They built a version of Ch Chinatown and... Um, we had real chickens and uh, and real mud and animals and herbs and spices and I wouldn't say it was an unpleasant smell, but uh, it was it was rich. It was uh, you know, and this is the value added stuff. <laughs> Obviously, Stefan, you've seen the show. There there, there are um, things which are CGI'd in in terms of like special effects, explosions and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, so many of the sets were so huge and all encompassing that. Uh, it's it's an amazing luxury to be able to walk into a place and actually smell those things. So if it did smell of mushrooms, it's only going to help. <laughs> so I was I was doing my research today and I was looking through the canon of Sherlock Holmes books and stories and realised the title's all a bit mad. So I was going to test your guys' knowledge with a game of like real or fake and read you some titles and you have to guess whether they're real or if I sat there this morning eating Cocoa Pops chuckling uh, as I did it. So I'll, I'll start with you, uh, Royce. Um, the Adventure, oh, sorry, The Adventure of the Hairy Hen. <laughs> I'm going to say that's fake. Yeah, I made that one up. I enjoyed making that one up. <laughs> Damn. Um, Good. The, the adventure of the devil's foot. That's real. Yeah, that is real. All right. All right Royce, I recognize that one. The adventure of the creeping man. That's real. Yeah. God, you guys are so much better than everyone else at this game. <laughs> <laughs> These amateurs. The, uh, yeah. the adventure of the Sussex vampire. That's not real. Ah, that one is real. Uh. Ah! <laughs> uh, right. The adventure of the Wimbledon wobbler. <laughs> that's that's real. No, no, I made that. What's a wobbler? <laughs> What's a wobbler, mate? What are you, what are you talking about? That's <laughs> like a womble. A what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I made that okay. one up. And finally, before I go, Henry, the Sherlock and the missing tangerine. False. Yeah, I made that one up as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking around me. So Tangerine, I'm guess. Anyway, thank you. There was no how point in that game. How, how many did you how many did you make up in total? About 16. I reckon 400. 
<laughs> no, oh, my, my actual list was about, yeah, I probably had about 60 or 70 on there and I've had to whittle them down. But uh, thanks for playing. And again, I had no rules and no points and no one's a winner. So anyway, thank you uh, for your time today. Best of luck with the series. Cheers, Stefan. But now you can go write your own Sherlock adaptation based yeah, on thanks, the Stephen. case of the <laughs> stinky hen or whatever. Yeah, if you need anyone for series two, just give me a shout. <laughs> exactly. We got your yeah. number. <laughs> All right, see you later, guys. Thanks, Stefan. All right, cheers. cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!